If your grill looks healthy, but you're missing that next level resin production, stay tuned. This might be the secret sauce you've been overlooking. First, check us out. We want you to come on over and join us at realdgc.com. I wanted to remind you all, membership is free, guys. We have a great growing community over there for real. Check out these groups. You can go on over there to ask a grow question, hang out and grow talk, throw down some memes. We have 4,000 active growers over there. No censorship. Realdgc.com. Membership is free. Come on over and hang out. Step up and become a producer. Get those grower dividends. You'll see what I'm talking about. Check out realdgc.com. You grow strong, yo. All right, let's get into this. First of all, Scotty, I got to understand the spectrum. Full spectrum, par, e-par. There's, there's a lot to it. It's in depth. It's super easy, actually. There is very little to it. Grambo, do me a favor, man. Would you hit that chart for me? Par is the photosynthetic active range. It's that box up top there. When they look at a chloroplast and wait to see it get activated so that it photosynthesizes between 400 and 700. They're color blue, and then there's a color red. Not all the color blue and not all the color red, but between those, if you have a, a par meter, that's where your plant is actually building itself, right? All right. I get that. Between 400 and 700 nanometers. That's it, right? Nanometers is how they measure. Nanometers. Yeah, just remember, when you look on a chart or something like that, everything between 400 and 700, that's the standard stuff that's building the plant. That's that white light. All those colors come together and make white light. But look what's on the, what you got these tails, right? It's always in the long tails, dude. Look, you see how it says 380 right there? Yep. That's outside the par range. Par range is 400. Well, that's UV light right there. And then you see how it says 7 to 70 over there outside the box? That is far red light. Now, both of those, neither of those, if you put those on the plant alone, they will not excite the chloroplast. They will not make photosynthesis. It will not build the plant. But if you add UV, it does something weird, change the plant morphology. Oh. If you hang on a second, if you add the far red, it changes the plant morphology. So that's what the E par, the is it effective, effective par? We got it. So that's what we're going to be seeing. Not when you go out, you know, most LEDs these days, almost all time back in the day, me and Scotty's older growing days, the LEDs <laughs> were blood rolls and purple and weird colors. Like well, everything you buy today is this nice looking clear white that you can see the canopy with full spectrum but that full spectrum does not include the epar rays this is where you're Correct. saying you might have to get some supplemental lighting if you want to take advantage of it yeah i i don't know it depends on what you're buying first i do me a favor i'm sorry would you throw that chart back one more time i just want to show you some remember the blue and the red blurple lights were the red and the blue together and it would make that weird whatever color that was and that's because look red is the most the plant absorbs red light most efficiently that's photosynthesis right there so that color red that specific color same color that was in the metal or, i'm sorry the hps lights plants absorb that and may turn it into photosynthetic energy really efficiently same with the blue green and and yellow and all that a bit less so that's why they were they were blurple all right well let's talk about the uh secret weapons for resin production here <laughs> uvb right is is a big one you're not going to get uvb and leds guys because the diodes can't handle it i understand they didn't last as long it's not efficient uvb comes in fluorescent tubes most of the time yeah, and this is something you want to have separate. We talk about buying a, a new LED light in 2025. Uh, some of them do add EPAR as to where they'll add some UV on the low end. They'll add some far red on the on the higher end. And yeah, don't buy UVB diodes. But UVA diodes, I don't think they, I thought they proved that doesn't do much. And then UVB, it has to only be on for what, 15 minutes every, you know, twice a day or something like that. So you want to have that a lot supplemental. Of yeah, a lot of diff uh, different recommendations. Int introducing UVB slowly, you can go up to longer periods of on during while your other lights are on. Um, UVB fluorescence work good. And, and it's we've read many studies that have been done. Some strains don't respond as well as others. But if you have everything else dialed, you have your full spectrum LED, you're comfortable with all that. It's, they're not expensive. They're low wattage. So it's a good addition to add. To definitely try and get more res resin production out of your flowers. 
if you have everything else dialed. I have UVB lights and they're just sitting. I saw them yesterday in the garage because I just <laughs> don't have everything dialed in enough to start playing with them and knowing what the UV light's doing. Not it. I like it. Touch on far red one more time. I knew I know they do make far red supplemental bars. You gotta be careful with that. You don't want too much far red. You can have stretching issues. Most quality LEDs these days definitely have the far red 730 nanometer diodes in there. Um, at I was reading no more than like five percent of the spectrum, but uh, you can use this to initiate flower stacking, more flower time. We'll elaborate on the far red benefit. Uh, far red benefits is pretty much just Emerson effect. The Emerson effect says that uh, if you put that little bit of red light in there, you know, 10 percent of red light that takes 20 watts, we'll say, well, you'll end up getting the amount of photosynthesis. The plant will react uh, like it got 50 or 60 watts of light. For some reason, when you add that far red to your normal spectrum, it just it excites the chloroplast a little bit more. One plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one equals three. You know, you get much more benefit out of just adding that little bit of light, five, I think it's five to 10%. And you'll see them. You'll be little red diodes if you turn turn over your uh, light. And they can make far red diodes. The longer the wavelength gets, the less intense it is on the equipment. So that's why like UVC and UVB, uh, it's, re- it's a violet wavelength. They talk about UVB burns, UVC is a clean light. I like it. Let's talk about data because data, numbers, it's all knowledge is power and lighting. You can easily overuse today's power for LEDs. Different phases of growth have different PPFD requirements. So let's talk about PPFD, the intensity of usable light that's on yes. the canopy. And this also, there's going to be a variable here with distance from canopy with your LED. You can check some manufacturers have total recommendations and charts available on their shut site to, to show your PPFD numbers without having to have a meter in hand. <laughs> You're going to make me smoke, are you? I'm going to say DLI. Anyway, but it's uh, basically measuring the raindrops, how hard it's raining. And then DLI is measuring how long it's raining, how 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 in 24 hours, how full does your bucket get? And you want with plants or with cannabis plants, they have a certain amount of light that they can absorb in a day. Also has to do with how much CO2 they have, but there's a certain amount of light they can absorb in a day. So uh, if you're not giving it enough or you're giving it too much, um, you're either wasting energy or wasting potential. So that's where DLI comes into play. And it does have a lot to do with, uh, uh, with if you're using CO2 or not. I'm like some of uh, the quick tools to use for, you can use a uh, photos and app that works with most phones to give you a pretty a general idea, good enough to base something on. Should I yeah. turn my LED down? Um, the numbers you can target for flower. I mean, 600 to 900 PKFD, but we're hearing a lot higher reports. I've seen people at well, 13, of course, they're using CO2 to have completely dialed grow. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it, uh, you have to match your light and your CO2. This is the new the, the new uh, soapbox I'm standing on. But yeah, you can have, I think it was like six or 700 PPFD if you have just ambient CO2, maybe a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But after you know 800, you're wasting your, your energy. And then I noticed, I made this simple rule of thumb where it starts, you can just match it. If you're at a thousand PPFD of light, you're giving a thousand PPFD of light, it can handle probably benefit from a thousand parts per million of CO2. You're up at 1200 PPFD, jacked it up to 1200 PPF, uh, PPM of CO2. 1500, 1500. Seems, seems to work out. I'm not sure if it's exact math, but makes sense to me. It's a good guide. It's a good guide for performance. Just don't overdo it, though. I mean, too much light, too much, especially heat. On your flowers, you can mm-hmm. use air pains, you can use flavor. I've seen buds get a little fluffier, not as dense. So be careful when you're cranking it up and really wash your canopy when you're getting into the higher PPFD numbers in flower. Yes. And just make sure you're matching your environment with it. Make sure your air conditioning can keep up, you know, your CO2 that we talked about, and match it all with your light. I like it. I like it. Let us know what you got going on. How are you dialing in your lighting? Do you do the tricks? Some people use sunrise, sunset features on their LEDs. What about you? Leave us some comments below. Yes. And come on, if you like this video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, Share this video with another grower you know. And check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommending because Grambo knows you'll dig them.